So your aquarium has green hair algae in it. This completely sucks, I know all about it. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get rid of green hair algae, how to remove it, and how to get rid of it. So first things first, I think you need to realize that algae is a normal thing in aquariums, so don't freak out. First of all, uh, what we usually do is we manually remove the hair algae because chances are you've already found it in your aquarium. This tank has it really bad all the time. You can see it in there, I'll zoom in there, just like clumps, there's different types of hair algae. But anyways guys, my, uh, what we do is we just get our hands in there and grab it. You can use tongs, you can use tweezers, they have different, uh, some people use like chopsticks it really doesn't matter you just have to manually remove it and move on uh there's not you know you can't get a pleco you can't i mean shrimp feed on it but you know it's not like uh they're they're, they're not gonna like do tons of justice like see that little shrimp right there He's right next to some hair algae, ironically. So so here's the thing, guys. We, you manually remove it, and then you try to figure out how you can fix it. So one of the first variables I always tell people is you need to fill your aquarium full of plants. And the reason is is because chances are your tank is getting excess amounts of light, and in that particular area, it's just getting too much lighting. And what happens when there's too much lighting is the light feeds on like proteins and excess amounts of nutrients. But when you fill the aquarium full of plants, uh, the plants are absorbing the light instead of having it like bounce off areas in the aquarium and what have you. Um, also, Driftwood loves hair algae. So we are, as of lately, we're removing all of the driftwood from all the aquariums because it's just like a hair algae magnet. And you know how to get rid of this stuff, you manually remove it and then you try to fix the issue. And in today's video, I'm not gonna talk about like using chemicals because we don't do any of that. And I don't really enjoy like, I, I mean, that's just not how, all, all of our fish tanks here are natural and we try to just do things naturally. So first of all, uh, driftwood is a magnet for the stuff. Uh, what you can do is fill the aquarium full of plants. That's the whole idea with almost all of our fish tanks in this entire house, you know, because the more plants you have, the more the more light it can absorb, and it just becomes a, a full ecosystem, like easier, if that makes any sense. The next trick I would do is to raise your light. Uh, as you can see, all of the lights in the house here are raised up. Even these lights here, these are shop lights. They're cheap Walmart shop lights. Uh, they're like 19 bucks. And you can tell these are raised up even like a foot. And these tanks look beautiful and luscious. Check them out. I'll stand back a little bit. Tell me those tanks don't look sexy, you know? There's a lot of plants there and it just, uh, so what happens here is, you know, the lighting isn't as like intense. And when it's raised up like this, uh, we do it like anywhere from like four inches to a foot, depending on the intensity of the aquarium light. So another one of the tips that uh, you could do is to use floating plants. And what happens here is, you know, like I, like I said before, the, the light is too intense for the aquarium. So what's happening here is the floating plants are just absorbing some of the light, almost like blockading it. Is that a word, blockade? I don't know, I'm a degenerate, so it is what it is. So the name of the game is to get yourself a decent light. Uh, the quality of the light is huge. So we have realized that the more money we spend on lights, the less algae we have, the less hair algae we have. And getting rid of the hair algae is, you know, it's it's pretty easy with these variables. So just please take me seriously. So as you can tell here, this light is super thin, super cheap. The housing is like tiny. And I feel like the diodes are almost like tiny and they're closer together. You can just tell like this light's just, it, it's a piece of crap. Um, I. Uh, you know, some of these lights are just built a lot better than others. So we talked about raising up the aquarium light. We talked about filling the, the tank full of as many plants as you can get your hands on. We talked about driftwood being a magnet for this stuff. And like I said, we're getting rid of all the driftwood. And the way I see it, um, you know, why would I waste real estate inside the aquarium on wood when it can just be full of plants that I can sell? Because we make a couple hundred bucks a month here on just selling aquarium plants. The next thing that I think should be talked about is water parameters you know a lot of people think that you know maybe uh you know if i have algae that i should do a water change and the, that could be the answer because a lot of times you know if you have unnecessary amounts of nutrients like nitrates from the fish being given off chances are that you know sometimes that can blow up algae in the aquarium 
And, um, you know, just check your nitrates. You know, if you have weight, if you have over 30 parts or 40 parts per million, chances are the light is just kind of feeding on those excess amounts of nutrients and you're just getting tons of algae. And check out that moss back there. That's pretty cool. I like some of these nano tanks here, but I think uh, maybe this summer we're going to be pulling out this 10 gallon rack and just doing dual 55s because we're learning that like the smaller the, the size of the aquarium, the more work it is as far as like just like cleaning it and just investing time into it. Whereas like these 55 gallon tanks over here, we don't touch them. We don't do water changes. We don't do anything. They're so easy. They just look so beautiful and they're massive. Here, let me flip the camera. I'll show you. Look at this. Like this is just to give you an example of how big this tank is. It's crazy, right? Like why, so why would I keep tens, these little tens when I could have 55s? I mean, and, and, and the lights, the shop lights are like 18 bucks at Walmart. So it's like, and that's, the plants love these shop lights guys. It's ridiculous. Okay, what were we talking about? Sorry, I have ADHD so bad. All right, so my next tip to getting rid of hair algae in your aquarium is to cut back the amount of time on the aquarium light. So you should have a timer on your aquariums. If you don't, shame on you. This will be a huge game changer if you don't have a timer. But what I advise you to do is just cut back the amount of time. And, uh, you know, they say eight hours a day, sometimes 10, maybe because your light is so intense that you need to just cut down the amount of time. Well, guys, hopefully this video helped you learn some tips on how to get rid of aquarium hair algae in your tank. I know this completely sucks, uh, but we will get through it. Manual, manually remove it and uh, change some of these variables in, the, in tips that I told you guys on your tanks. But like once you sort of figure it out, just kind of leave it alone because these aquariums where they really thrive is with time and routine. You know, set the timer, uh, don't touch your light height, just like literally touch as little things as possible. And because the plants will adapt. And even if they die, they will they will come back, readapt, regrow. These like uh, Mother Nature is so resilient with this stuff. Uh, sorry, there's a train going by. But anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. Hit me up in the comments. Did this did some of these variables uh, or tips help you learn how to get rid of aquarium hair algae? I'll see you in the next one. Peace.